Well, thank you. Let's open this up to some questions from the floor. I think there are microphones around. So if you would put up your hand, and then I think a microphone will be brought to you. Who wants to ask something? There's a hand over there. Uh, good morning, Mr. Bim. Man, Mike Collett from Reuters. Could you explain why both the 2018 and 22 World Cups are being decided at the same time? What was the rationale for that from the ex <laughs> uh, Frankly speaking, uh, it looks to me it was uh, based on uh, maybe a commercial uh, point of view. I, I heard that it can generate uh, much more uh, revenues if we combine the uh, two. Uh, I personally was uh, uh, with, with the view that, you know, we have to separate it, uh, to separate them, uh, but uh, the decision has been taken not to combine them. Of course, now I am, I am one of those uh, people who designed or decided that, you know, both of them has to come uh, together. But you are right, we should, we should decide it uh, two different uh, uh, days for these two different uh, competitions. Any more questions? I see a hand over there, Tarek. Mr. 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 Bin Hamam, uh, Tarek Panjab from Bloomberg. So your microphone's not working. Mr. Binham, I'm Tariq Panja from Bloomberg. Just following up from, from Mike's um, question to you, um, first of all, why were you uh, opposed to two World Cup bids at the same time? What was your reasoning why they shouldn't be together? And secondly, when the vote is made on December the 2nd, do you think, hand on heart, the two best candidates for 2018 and 2022 will be the winners when Mr. Blatter opens the envelope? Uh, first of all, my point of view on the time, naturally today I am 100% with what the executive committee has decided. I am with uh, two bits to be decided in the same day, you know. I mean, but that was my argument on, on, on that time. Uh, to, to decide something for 2022, it is, it is it's actually, actually it's a long, quite long time, you know. It is, uh, uh, you don't know what, what will happen within this 12 years until uh, 2022. Secondly, of course, I was of the opinion that 2022 should be decided in 2016. And that time could be a different executive committee in the place. And in my opinion that we have taken the right of some people who must be supposed to be in 2016 and the decision uh, making seats, you know. So that was actually my, my, my argument. I hate to take their rights uh, in advance. And uh, also, I believe if we are deciding 2022, what is going to prevent us to come next year, for example, to decide 2026, the same people. So it actually, this, this is actually my, uh, my, uh, my argument uh, based, uh, based on. Yes, now the best candidates to be in the, uh, in the 2000. 22 uh, and 2018, whether they are going to win or not, I'm actually also not 100% sure because this is depending more on the public relation and, and uh, you know how much you as uh, as as a marketing person can you sell your product. You know, in, in life this is happening. You know, I mean, you you buy something not necessarily the best in the in the, in the market because. One has bitter, bitter marketing, you know, uh, what you call uh, sense to market his, his product than the, than the others. Besides, as I said, there was no written criteria. So people have to follow uh, when, when we decide. If there was a written criteria, so we judge and uh, evaluate these criteria before we decide then maybe that's, that's, that's possible, uh, the best is going to be, uh, to be uh, the winner. Uh, but today that, is not, that does not exist. As I said, I'm just repeating myself. It is, uh, uh, it is depending on you how best you can convince the other 
to vote. Uh, to vote. I'll tell you, frankly speaking, all the nine candidates today and have their strong, strong uh, points and they have their weak, uh, weak points. And you have to make a, a judgment by yourself now based on, on, on how the people are uh, going to market themselves. Other questions? Over here, please. Do we have a microphone? Thanks very much. Uh, James Corbett from World Football Insider. How close are you to deciding where your vote will go for 2018 and what will motivate it? Will you go for the best bid or will it be motivated by factors for the 2022 bid race? And if so, will you be arguing for the best case for the Qatar bid or for the AFC in general? Yeah. Okay, now you are asking me, I, I will answer you frankly what I feel, but you know, there are another executive committee members who has different point of view and he has different, uh, what he called, criteria and measurements, you know, for his, for his decision. Yes, I will be uh, naturally look, looking to the interest of Qatar because Qatar is bidding today. And uh, for me, and I think all the bidders are going to tell you, okay, if you vote for me, I will vote for you. This, this principle must be... Uh, not surprising, uh, not surprising uh, anybody. Uh, we, the four members in the AFC, decided or said that we would like to see the 2022 on, on, uh, in Asia, and we are actually very frank in our, in our opinion. But naturally, I believe all those people who has got a bid, they can, they will prefer that you know to see that this uh, this World Cup. To be organized in their own countries, and, and this is also applicable applicable to me. I will decide based on maybe first what is uh, suitable for Qatar. That's a surprising answer because deals made by bidders are forbidden. Um, England can't say to the U.S. if you vote for us, we'll vote for you. But you're saying that FIFA Exco members can and do take that position. No, I mean I'm talking about myself as 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 a Qatari uh, uh, voter. You know, uh, I'm not talking about. I know generalizing this on uh, in, uh, uh, and the other 23 members of uh, of FIFA. Maybe they have different opinion and different uh, different views. David. Uh, David Miller, <coughs> Daily Express. In the past, the first round group matches in the World